Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm very excited to finally share you, with you all my first doll customizing video. Now I've been planning one of these videos for a very long time. I even tried sewing a mock-up dress which is the one you can see on this doll now with just some scrap fabric that I had laying around. And just slowly over time, I've been buying and preparing all the supplies that I would need for this. And now, I'm finally able to share with you all my first doll custom video. And as you can see, my doll is currently headless. Well, her head isn't connected to her body. The neck joint peg thing was stuck into her head, and so I had to use pliers to get it back into its original place. And once that was taken care of, I decided to just go ahead and start off by cutting off all of the doll's hair. Mainly because it was really gross and old, this was a secondhand doll that I bought at a thrift store. And so the hair was really gross and messy and just like filled with dried up glue. And so off it comes. And I tried cutting it as close to the scalp as possible so then I could pull out any last plugs from underneath the head. And so once we got her completely shaved off, I went in and got my 100% acetone that we had at home, or nail polish remover to remove off her factory paint. Since I am planning on doing a full doll customization, new hair, new face, new clothes. And the first step was to clear off all the factory paint and 100% acetone, although it's very dangerous, especially for your lungs. It works really well with taking off all the factory paint that's on the doll. And so once that was completely ready and dried, I quickly cleaned it with some soap and water and got ready once it was dry to spray the face of the doll with Mr. Super Clear. But it's very, very important to note that this is very dangerous and very toxic for your lungs. This should only be done by adults with a vapor mask or a gas mask and with the correct protection this hobby of doll customizing is not for children and it should really only be done by people who know what they're doing with the correct equipment and the correct protective equipment that they need. And so after I sprayed the doll a couple of times and it was ready to start working on, I got out my watercolor color pencils and my Mungio soft pastels along with some other things like a kneaded eraser and some brushes so I could start working on the face of the doll. And this process of doing a face on the doll was extremely difficult for me. I've never really been one that's been good with drawing faces in general, but I thought it would be easier since the face and the molding of the face on the doll was already there. I thought it would be like just adding the color to it. But it didn't really come out as well as I intended and I struggled to do small enough lines. And while working throughout all of this, I did spray the doll multiple times in between layers when the pastels and the watercolor pencils weren't building up on themselves I would go out and spray with more Mr. Super Clear with the correct equipment and protection and although I did keep spraying the doll I had lots of trouble with actually using the watercolor pencils as they were and so I tried using some water and a then brush to apply the paint or the color onto the doll and that kind of worked for some time 
but eventually it just wasn't building up anymore and so I gave in and decided to use some watered down acrylic paints and most of the doll's face up actually was done off camera because I was struggling way too much with it and it was becoming very difficult to do this while recording at the same time and so eventually we got here and just don't look too closely at the doll's face um, she didn't really come out as nicely as I wanted her to but moving on from the doll's face I'm starting on working on the doll's hair and I'm using acrylic yarn to make yarn wefts for the doll's hair where basically this process is just of tying down the yarn and then brushing it out with a pet comb and then straightening it with a straightener which I actually didn't have one and there wasn't one in our home so I had to go out and buy one and I was honestly very afraid to use it I was afraid to burn myself but surprisingly I didn't burn myself and especially for the first round of yarn wefts that I did I definitely straightened it very excessively and I was probably a little too extra with it you don't have to straighten them this much as I did but once you straighten them you just cut them and then glue them down onto a piece of plastic and let them dry and once they're dry you just pull them off the plastic and cut up the dried glue so it's in a more manageable size so then you can use the wefts as doll hair and then glue them directly onto the skull of the doll this process didn't take as long as I originally thought it would and it was honestly a lot funner than I thought it would be I honestly really enjoy this process of making the doll's hair and it's probably the only thing that actually went according to plan probably because I was following Moseki Tho's tutorials and it was very easy to follow but once all the yarn wefts were done and ready, I got out my quick dry tacky glue and started gluing the yarn wefts onto the doll, starting off in the lower back part of the head of the doll and then working my way around and above the doll, trying to go in like a circular motion. And I didn't really do this on my doll but it's recommended to go with thinner strands of doll hair in the middle and center of the hair and head of the doll and then go with thicker strands at the ends and the center and top of the doll's head um, but I didn't really do that I ended up leaving all the very thin strands at the top of the head and when you look really closely to the doll it's very noticeable But this process of gluing on the Dar Hall's hair and gluing all the wefts on was also very fun for me, surprisingly. But moving on from the doll's hair, we're going into the doll's clothing. And again, I did most of this off camera because I struggled a lot and I wasn't really able to use my machine for most of it. And I ended up doing most of it by hand. And when I'm hand sewing, I struggle a lot to do it in camera and in frame. I always end up very off-centered or just doing it on my lap. But I am following a pattern that I got from Delightful's Etsy shop, which I will link in the description if you are, are interested. It really helped me a lot with making the doll's dress. And it was honestly a really good place to start with my first doll custom. It took some of the stress off of creating something completely my own. Although I do have some experience with sewing, I don't have any experience with actual clothing items and actually sewing things like dresses and especially not things at this small of a scale. 
but eventually the doll did finally come together and this is how she turned out. I did add a little bit of gems and bows to the doll and to the original dress pattern and I did make the petticoat to go underneath the doll's dress just to give it some more volume. And although she isn't perfect and in certain angles she looks very confused or scary even, I'm overall really happy with how she turned out, how the dress came out. I think she gives off a very summery or spring vibe and it's honestly perfect since yesterday was the first day of spring. I really wanted to do a spring themed doll. I was really inspired by the Japanese cherry blossoms or sakura that are going to be blooming very soon. And with all that being said, I am naming this doll Haruno, which is Japanese for spring. It's not a very creative name, but I think it suits the doll really well. And she's ready at the perfect time since yesterday was the first day of spring. And from my first experience in doll customizing, there were lots of mess ups and things didn't come out as perfectly as I would have originally wanted them to. But I did learn a lot and I honestly really loved the whole process. This video took a little over a month to make with the whole process of making the doll and the hair and the clothes. And I'm honestly really excited and inspired to do this again. It definitely won't be anytime soon, but I am excited to continue. And since spring has started, I did get the chance to take some nice photos with the doll outside with the trees and the flowers that were blooming. And I think this doll really looks nice with the spring environment. And I think she, although is very imperfect, I think she is really pretty and I think she does embody her name, I don't know. Originally I was really inspired by the sakura trees and I was thinking of completely basing her off of that but then the design kind of lent itself more towards spring in general instead of just the sakura trees. And as you can tell, I did go a little overboard when doing the photo shoot for the doll. I was really excited because it has been very rainy here recently. And so I didn't know if I was going to be able to take photos outside. But I got lucky and there was one bright and sunny day where I was able to take all these photos with the doll outside and all the spring and nature. And I feel like it was a really great way to end this project that was inspired by spring. And I think this video came out at a perfect time, just at the start of spring. And although she isn't perfect, I'm honestly very happy with how she came out and I'm honestly a little proud of how everything turned out. And I'm really motivated to do this again sometime soon. 
I hope you all enjoy this video and like what I made and like how to know my first doll custom. Thank you all so much for watching and God bless you.